Good morning. Good morning. Today we celebrate the ninth Sunday in this season of Pentecost, actually ninth Sunday after Pentecost. I invite you to stand as you're able. We turn to our order for confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. And let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are active to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of the holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our gathering hymn, number 835, verses 1 through 8.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. We receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We turn to our bulletin as we pray together for the prayer of the day. Glorious God, your generosity rewards the world with goodness. And you cover creation with abundance. Awaken in us a hunger for the food that satisfies both body and spirit. And with this food, fill all the starving world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
confirmed it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart, for I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all. God bless forever. Amen. Amen. Word of God, word of God. Thank you, God.
people when they were ill, and it gets to be dark, disciples come and they say, Lord, send them home. We can't feed them. Let them feed themselves, and they will be well. Well, Jesus said, no, you feed them. What do you got to do back here? He said, we got five loaves of bread. Now, you know, five loaves of bread, you think I could feed 8,000 people. Five loaves of bread, just a loaf of bread, like sandwiches. You think I could take care of everybody in that crowd? No. How? Because of Jesus. She's got it. It's wonderful. And two fish. But the disciples didn't believe they could feed them. So what does Jesus do? and the bread. He lifts them up to heaven and prays to God do your thing. Now on their own, they couldn't have fed that crowd with that. But they turned to God. Jesus did his father and they were all fed. And they had 12 baskets left over. And then they went home full and satisfied. God's miracle was given for this reason. To show people what the kingdom of God it's a place that is full of abundance of the things that are needed. It's where God takes care of us. How does that happen? But when we trust God to do that. Now, I'm going to suggest one little thing. There's so many things we can do to help people in this world, right? Lots of people that are hungry, that don't have a home, and so on. And we sometimes get so overwhelmed that we can't do this. It's just too much. God put you and me and each one of us on this earth to do noble things, to just plant a seed, to show an act of kindness, and then to let God do God's thing. And wondrous things take place, like 5,000 men, women, and children being fed two fish, five loaves of bread. Join me in prayer. O Lord, may the words of my mouth, the meditations upon our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. We should never discount what children can do. Maggie's doing wondrous things already with her little life. On occasions, they have probably been the ones that have led the way for others to follow. Children set examples in the nurturing care that God has given to us toward one another. A couple of months ago, I read in some place, it might have been Facebook, the story of a proud parent who 
his youngest son, Brian, found the penny on the ground. He saw where it had been dropped. It had been dropped by a man in front of him. He walked up to the man, gave him the penny, and the man said, no, no, you don't need to give me that. You keep it. Well, before you know it, he has gone back to his family, and he sees a jar, and that jar is labeled simply something to this effect um, for the children. Notice this. It comes back over to Brian and says, Brian, you should be rewarded for that. And he gave him a quarter. Well, what's a kid going to do? He might have put it back in that jar. But a kid's going to be a kid. He found the gumball machine. He spent that quarter pretty quickly. He was a smart young man. But he had done something that was thoughtful of others and not of himself. Do not discount what children Today we're going to talk about another kind of discount, and it's not the good kind. There is another form that is not so productive. I don't suppose that anyone here has ever done something like this. Play the game that people play called disqualification, and it goes like this. People all the time disqualify themselves because of who they are. They consider themselves to not be old enough or not young enough, or small enough, or wealthy enough, or not something or the other enough. And that game can be played by multiple groups. A congregation can function as a team, and many of us, like we, do so. When that happens, then the congregation may say something to this effect, whether by word or action, we're just not big enough to do that, or wealthy enough, or devout enough, or educated enough to give a gift to make a difference in this world. So we'll just wait and see what happens. Disqualification. It's also the name of a game when a person or a group says, what we have isn't worthy to be called a gift. It's small. It's simple, it's poor, it's laughable, it's just not enough. They wouldn't want it. It's pitifully small and slight compared to the needs of the world. Maggie and I talked about that. Now, do you recognize this game at all in yourself or in groups you've been a part of? Have you seen individuals or groups play that out and keep themselves from doing something as opposed to Have you perhaps played that game yourself? You kept your hand closed instead of offering something that you could easily do. Well, many of us have. The game of disqualification is something we learn to play, and it's probably something we need to unlearn. There was a story some time ago about a young child. Her name was Crystal, and uh, she had not learned disqualification in her life. She was 10 years old. She had already at that age volunteered in Habitat for Humanity at the Humane Society for the American Cancer Society. But above all, what seemed to have put her in the spotlight was a simple, generous act on her part. She had collected years ago, and many you remember these, Beanie Babies. We had some of those beanie babies now, they would be worth quite a bit. She took her collection of beanie babies, she sold them, and she donated it to the Autistic Society in the state of Michigan. Crystal's generous nature caused her acting coach, because she did take acting lessons, to nominate her for the Millennial or Millennium Dreamers Award, one of 2,000 children around the world this award. She's somebody who knows how to dream and how to act on those dreams. Or to put it differently, she refuses to play a game that is far too popular among many people, the game of disqualification. She could have played that game, of course, but she could have said, I'm not old enough. I'm 
not wealthy enough. I'm not something or the other enough to make a difference. And maybe none of us would have noticed that she had done little or not. She could have indulged in a quick game of disqualification by deciding that what she had to offer wasn't much of a gift. Feeding babies, yeah, they had some market value, but more so maybe now. But it made a difference. When it comes to funding medical research, feeding babies are not the first thing you would think about doing, but she did something. And then too, this young girl could have played that game by questioning her own motives. For you see, her interest in autism research was not the result of opening up a medical dictionary and randomly finding an illness or a malady of society. She knew about it. Her experience had led her to despair, but it had kindled a passion within her to not play that game. She refused to. For that, we could give thanks. And maybe we can avoid playing that game ourselves. Instead of disqualification, we can get what we have, we can, we can give what we have to give. And here's the important part. Leave the rest to God. Give and do what we can. Leave the rest to God. That's the gospel for today, my friends. And we're going to talk about that. Jesus and his disciples had a busy day. They came ashore. There was a crowd waiting. They came from everywhere. That's what's happening. And Jesus, it says, had compassion on them. Now, that's a pretty cool concept. He saw their need, and he did what he could do. He healed their sick. Well, the time of the evening was drawing near, and the disciples perhaps were tired than Jesus, and they wanted to send them on their way. Let them go to their villages, find something to eat. And Jesus says, no, you go. And you feed them. What do you have on hand? You give them something to eat. Well, the Lord was given five loaves and two fish. What can we do with such a small amount? They said to themselves. All right, then. Just bring it here. Let me take care of it. Well, Jesus did. He wouldn't play that silly game of disqualification. The disciples were ready to give up. They concluded that crowd was just too much. Send them away. Let them take care of themselves. Here was an opportunity, though. Here was a teaching moment. Here was another chance to reveal something about the kingdom of God, and Jesus does just that. Tell the people to sit down. Jesus saw that game that was getting played out. Like Crystal, he only saw opportunity of what lie before him. So he takes the fish and the loaves, the boy had given in, he gives thanks to God for them, and they proceed to feed the entire crowd, and there is plenty left over. And those who ate were over 5,000 persons. So what does Jesus do here? He works with what he has on hand. That's what our life is. It's what we have on hand. What is available to us? And he leaves the rest to God. Years ago, my friend Morris Snyder, Morris lived to be 98. His mother lived to be 110 years of age. Morris was an energizer bunny, bunny at the age of 90 still. He uh, saw a need. One of the pastors at the church that I served in Maryland had been there for 34 years. I retired at 33 years because I didn't want to break his record. I wanted him to have the glory and the honor. And I was tired, too. But uh, there was a cabin at the church camp called Marley Ridge in Jefferson, Maryland. And it was named the Huddle Hut after Pastor Huddle. Well, it was in a bit of disrepair, so Morris had heard this story, and he started a simple little thought. He set up a little in the church narthex that had a slot to put change in and a little sign on the front that said pennies from heaven and people dropped their change in there over the years they maintained that cabin and fixed it up 
They gave scholarships for camping to children. There was a home for the elderly indigenous, uh, uh, indigent in Hagerstown, Maryland. They gave money to help support that home. Thousands of dollars were raised in the course of years by people's leftovers and wondrous things were done. Can you imagine how that young boy with five loaves and two fish must have felt after this miracle of the multiplication? It had to have been a transforming moment for him to see such great potential in such a simple gift. Yes, he could have said, nah, this is for my family. I'm out of here, and turned and left. But he did not. No games for him. He hands over his lunch or the food for his family's supper, and he lets God do the rest. And from his meager resources, he was able to cater a meal for over 5,000 people. Joseph Wilson, a young man from the University of Virginia, he played on their football team. He was injured. He was in rehab. An interesting story of Joseph. He noticed that the staff, the, reme the, the menial staff on the campus back in the 90s, was paid less than $7.25 an hour. Most of those folks, he observed, were Afro-American. They were at the bare bones. Now, Charlottesville is probably one of the most highly costing places on the East Coast to live. These people did not even have a means of supporting their family on such a wage. Most of them had other jobs they went to. So he decided on his own to contact a few of his buddies, and on the steps of the beautiful rotunda, for 12 days, they held a hunger strike. They ate nothing. Here's an athlete. He lost tremendous weight during a time he should have been building up his muscle mass to play football again. And others joined in that 12-day process. Not all of them made it, but at the end there were over 13 of them. They made some difference because they had a little of something to give, their time and their heart for the sake of others. Now it didn't change a whole lot immediately, but it responded over 40,000 letters, not emails, but letters to the Board of Visitors. And over time and over the course of history, some changes did take place. I little, and out of little can come great and wondrous things, if we don't disqualify ourselves from just beginning. I can do something about something. I have something that I can do and I can give. I will be open to God using me. Not putting the brakes on what God might choose to do with us, but God finding something to do with us. Pastor Charles Hofacker noted this. The mystery factor is simple. When we give, we don't give simply to a hungry crowd or to an autistic society in Michigan. We give to God. And strange to say, our gift sets God free to do something, to burst forth in new and in unexpected ways. Maybe you would say to yourself, what good are a few beanie babies, a few pennies, some change in my pocket, some bread and fish, going without food for 12 days, offering a meal every week during the summer months in this little place, spending a few hours at Easter time with family and children to give them a little measure of joy in the midst of that holy week working alongside teens and other adults, cleaning up an elderly neighbor's property, fixing a fence, putting in a handicapped ground. Who would, we wouldn't know unless we do something with the gifts given to us and see what God just might be doing in turn through us. God is simply waiting on us in order that through us his mercy his love, his help, and hope just might be revealed. Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand as you're able. We're going to turn to our next hymn, hymn number 471. And that is, let us break bread together. 
sorrow into joy, our tears to laughter. Have compassion on us. Nourish, sustain, guide, and protect. Teach us to care for each other. Gather us around your son. Let him lead us and all your people to the banquet you have prepared. There may be, there may we eat and drink and gaze upon him, our heart's desires forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your son Jesus. And all God's people say, Amen. 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 The peace of the Lord be with you. And also to you. Please greet one of
Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace now and forever. Amen. Amen. Invite you to stand as you're able. And together we pray our post communion prayer. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ to make us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you. Be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. and in the schools. Deanne, when does your uh, teaching begin? Um, I go to Mars at 10.30. Excellent. You're in our thoughts and prayers. Thank you. And uh, Maggie, you started this week or next or She started this week already. She did start already. Good. I hope it goes well. Okay. She said I'm going tomorrow. Going tomorrow. Well, that's good to hear. We want you to go. <laughs> You don't have a choice. I'm sorry. <laughs> we'll learn that in life too. There's certain to have tos. Um, tomorrow uh, is uh, Benita our anniversary, uh, 52 years married. So uh, keep us in your thoughts and prayers if that might continue. Come in, friend, have a seat. And uh, we're just uh, at the end of our worship service. And. Uh, so that's that. We've got our family with us, and we have some wonderful news to share. Uh, last night, we received a call from our son, uh, Benjamin. Ben and Ashley and their son, Cyrus, live in Denver, Colorado. It could be the other side of the world. They found a clause in their company's policy that enables them to transfer to any city that has that company and work remotely and in the office. They're moving to Charlotte. Oh, wow. Wow. Our whole family. We'll have our whole family on the East Coast, and we are so, so excited for that. We had a wonderful vacation together, and they just knew in their hearts they need to come home to family. So keep them in your thoughts and prayers as they look to buy, a, sell a home, buy a home, and make that move. It's on their own. The company didn't go pay anything, but they're doing the right thing. Are there other people and occasions we need to celebrate or pray for? Elliot family. Some people know Robin and Elliot. Okay. And a few other people. So it's a very long back, but they're lovely family. So. Very good. And very good. Also, also the family of Fred Roberts, who was a member here many, many years ago. Okay. He died this week. Oh, Fred. Fred. Okay. Will do. Uh, my friend Linda Miller, who we've been praying for for quite a while, passed away this week, last Sunday evening, from pancreatic cancer. It was uh, that's a tough disease to deal with, but uh, we're having a celebration of her life. She was a wonderful artist, a wonderful person. 
And we all know wonderful people, but God keeps those in the evidence. Evelyn? Teaching people to live to bless. 
and serve the Lord. Good morning. How are you, sir? Okay, you hang on, and then I'll be back, okay? 